Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this edition of Video Adrenaline for Premiere Pro, brought to you by Creative Cow. Today, I want to go over how the media browser works and talk about some features you might not realize exist. Here we go. The media browser is in your default workspace, and it's where all of your media can be found. Now, it's real tempting, especially if you come from After Effects or other tools, to use File Import. You don't want to use this. Importing is fine for graphics, but not for tape-based footage because it's going to ignore a lot of metadata. It also has problems if you import because it's going to go ahead and take those files that are split across multiple cards or maybe segmented because of formatting issues with the cards into two gigabyte chunks and bring those in as separate files, and that's just not a good idea. Using the media browser, it sees all of the metadata, preserves the card structure, and properly brings it in. So let's go ahead here back down to the media browser and you see we've got a whole tree here. Now if we select an individual clip within the media browser, there we go, double click on the folder, you might be saying, well, why can't I see any media? That's because the window is not big enough. Let's go ahead and expand this so we can see more. One way of doing this is to go under the workspace and choose the meta logging workspace. And when you do this, things are going to rearrange, giving more room to the media browser. You'll notice in this case that you can now see the footage, and you could double click to load clips to preview them. Now, simply previewing a clip does not add it to your project file. This is simply browsing what's on your hard drive. So if you want to add a clip to your project, you need to go ahead and grab it in the media browser and drag it up to the project panel. When you do that, it's going to drop into your project and import. Notice, there it is. I can also bring up everything in a folder. So let's just go up a level, and you'll see that we have a folder there. And I could drag that entire folder into the project. It imports. There it is. Now you see here that there was extra files in that card folder. All sorts of extra things like preview files from the DSLR, extra metadata, stuff that didn't work. But if I ignore that and I look at the folder, you'll see that all the clips inside did come in. There are the four clips. But again, it got a little bit confused. All sorts of extra pieces here. The audio split off from the video and other things. So I recommend that you really try to stick to not dragging in folders, but instead drill into a folder find the actual media that you want to use, and then pull it in. And this is coming in just fine. These movie clips are loading. If I want to look at how this file was put together, we can go ahead and take a look over here at File Properties, and I could see a little bit of information that this is MXF media. So if I dragged in the whole folder, it kind of split that up. The audio is separate from the video, all those extra material. In this case, this is XD cam footage. Got a little bit confused. But by dragging in the individual clip, it comes in intact and everything is interpreted correctly. So that works well. And again, you can click and load and then drag through the clips to see it. There we go. Now, a couple things I want to point out. Importing through the media browser does not transfer the media to your hard drive. Premiere Pro works with material natively. So if you were to just pop a card into a card reader and started dragging things into your project, as soon as you ejected the card, it would be offline. You need to make disk images of your cards, you need to clone those cards to your drive, and then start to put those into folders that you want to work with. Personally, I like to use Adobe Bridge if it's QuickTime Media, organize it, or the media browser works great as well, and you can start to move files around to really get them where you want. Once they're on your drive and you drag them into your project, then you're all set. It's in Premiere Pro and it's on your media drive already. Now let's go ahead here and take a look at a red footage and you see that we've also got the ability to pull in a red clip right into Premiere Pro. That came in, it was the native R3D file, no transcoding, no rewrapping, no downtime, there's the file. If I double click it loads up and I can drag through and I can actually see that red file. Now the cool thing about what we just did by bringing in that R3D file is this is actual raw video. Unlike other solutions that transcode it and bake it in, you have full flexibility with this clip. I can go ahead and right click on the R3D file and go to Source Settings 
and that actually brings up the native R3D window here. And you'll see all sorts of options. You can actually go in and start to work with the footage. Uh, depending on the footage, you might be able to change its ISO. For example, this is at 320. I could bump that up you know, to 500 there, and it's more open exposure, not put a lot of noise in. I could take the white eyedropper here, find something that should be white, and click to re-white balance the shot. I can go ahead and remove some noise in this image. I can take care of actually changing the color temperature manually if I want to warm or cool the shot by shifting it there. Twirl this up for a second and let's go ahead and recover some of those blown out highlights. And we'll actually lift up and play with the shadows there. Notice we're brightening the darker areas. And then I could even put a little bit of contrast in there to get some of that crispness back twirl on down a little farther and you've got a fully interactive curve. Now you can deal with sliders, but I like to actually use the control points here. So I can open that up and then pull down my highlights a little bit to recover those. Now let's put a little bit of contrast back in the blacks there. Looks really good. And if you're satisfied with that, you can actually click the Save Preset button. This will create your own preset that you could then quickly apply to other clips by just right-clicking and opening them. You can even unify several clips all at once to the same setting. I click OK. There it is. The clip has been updated throughout the project, ready to use, not a lot of extra work. So you see some pretty cool flexibility. While you're in the media browser here, you have access, of course, to all sorts of metadata about it. If there's text analysis embedded, you could see it. That's why I like this metalogging workspace. And of course, there is a great shortcut you need to know about. And the ability there is to just roll over a window and press the Grav or tilde key. And you see in that case, the media browser goes full screen. So this makes it really easy. We can jump quickly through. In this case, card one is actually a Panasonic file folder, but I could see all the files in there by switching if I wanted. We could jump up here to the media folder and I could see everything in there, quickly getting access, or I can limit my view to just one type of file footage once I'm in. As you switch folders here, you'll notice that it intelligently updates. This is a red card image. This was a Panasonic card image. And if we leave that set to Panasonic, it'll automatically guess as we go back and forth in between. So pretty, pretty flexible. That's looking good there, and as you see, we can quickly move between folders with this tree structure. Remember, double click, and the clip will open, and you could preview it. And that's nice there how it intelligently switched back. Roll over, press the tilde key, find another clip I'm interested in, and double click, and it switches back to that workspace, and you could drag through. So all in all, a very robust media browser it makes it easy to find what you're looking for, Look at all sorts of file formats without transcoding, without rewrapping, without downtime. Just remember, you have to copy the media to your hard drive first using either a copy utility or just the finder level. I like to make disk images and then bring that media into your project. Don't try to import directly because when you pop the cards, the media won't be there anymore. For Creative Cow, my name is Rich Harrington. I invite you to head on over to creativecow.net. Be sure to click on the podcast tab. And you'll find tons more Adobe Premiere Pro training. And while you're there, sign up for a subscription to Creative Cow Magazine. A lot of great stuff. Thanks again.